Wipers Tower or Buddings Tower or Rye Castle. And where does that come from? Uh, well, Rye Castle was what it was built at for the king. And then there was somebody called Baddings who lived here, and then somebody called Wipers who lived here. He was defence against the French because the French kept raiding. Right. And then when things quietened down a little bit, they let it out to be a home, uh, but always could be used for defence if necessary. And then eventually it became the prison as well as defence. And it became the courthouse as well as the prison. And it's gone on all the way through when it was the prison until the, the end of the 19th century. This is a smuggler's lantern. They would have put an oil lamp inside here. This comes off, homemade, I would have thought, by the local blacksmith. Right. And the lamp would have gone out <coughs> through the uh, pipe yep. and you would have signalled out to sea and said whatever the signal was that it was ready to come in or please don't come in with your boat. And the idea of that is so that anywhere else you can't see the light. That's presumably. right, that's so right. Because of course it was meant to be total darkness. Yes. Well, I don't know when these, there's no date on them, but we think these were developed from about the 1600s. Right. This is probably about 18. Yes. I mean, Rye was the capital of smuggling for many centuries. It started off in the early 1200s and I'm afraid to say it's still going on. What? What kind of things were there to prevent the smugglers from unloading their cargo? At the beginning, very little. I mean, because everybody was involved and it gave them an extra bit of income. I mean, it was very low wages here, you know, the sheep rearing on the marsh for the ordinary labouring folk. Yes. And of course, the upper classes quite like their brandy and, and so on as well. But then gradually they decided after the Napoleonic Wars, they'd really got to put their foot down and stop it. Yes. And this is when you started to get the proper coast guards then. And the Coast Guards became much more organised, even though they were outnumbered 50 to 100 to 1. And very dangerous job, and there were quite a lot of deaths. These are really clever advice. The riding um, officer would be on his horse and obviously couldn't carry very much. Yeah. But these, any of the barrels of cognac and some that was brought in was very highly concentrated. And so when a barrel was uh, acquired, they would put these balls into it and it told them what proof it was. Depending on how many floated, that was the proof. And Dr. Wilson is the guy who He's came the guy up with who the designed idea. it, yes. I wish I knew a bit more about it. <laughs> <laughs> but of course everybody was involved. You either had the dress that you knew who were involved, the ladies would hide things under their skirts. Uh, you got the furniture that had false bottoms in drawers and that sort of thing. The rooms would have swivel cupboards so that you could get down uh, stairs somewhere else. All the attics, for example, on Lyon Street ran into one. You could get into one and run down the whole street. Gosh. So all sorts of things, things on floats that would be under the water, things that would be on the water. They got all kinds of things. Uh, Joe, tell us about some of the ghost stories that relate to rye and smuggling and that sort of thing? Yes. Well, it was quite interesting that I did a whole series of little booklets with the children at Rye College. And we invited elderly people to come in and talk to us in my local history group. And we wrote down what they were talking about. Well, one boy particularly was interested in ghosts. So we got the English department to set a homework and they could either make a ghost story up or ask their relations for ghosts that they'd seen. And I only wanted that second category. Yes, of course. We have then written it into a booklet, which is a walk round, right? But so many of them, it was clear that they had been based on smugglers. It was to frighten them, to keep them indoors. Right. The ghost story and, and, you know, and I mean, a lot of the ghost stories are still, you know, you hear the footmarks, you hear people in here, that kind of thing. And we have quite a lot of ghost uh, people in here looking and listening. But ghost story, a lot of them were not the proper ones. It was to keep yes. people at, inside. I think it was mainly for the outsiders who came in because I think the locals really knew what was going on. Yes. But if you've got somebody who was on their way to London, because this was a main uh, route in from France, of course, from Boulogne and, and so on, and to go up to London, and if you've got somebody staying here, you might say, stay in because they're ghosts. Whereas you perhaps knew there was a run that night. Yes. Uh, they're very <laughs> clever people, the smugglers. And, and I think, you know, it was surprising. They must have given them another set of income. I mean, if it was a fishing boat, very easily change into a smuggling boat, but he might have a shop on the high street as well at the same time yes. to sell his goods, both legal and illegal. <laughs>